When the mystical forces of the cosmos combined to create the living man, Mark Bannerman, often written in block capital letters because, um, well, for reasons known only to himself, he was not blessed with a superabundance of self-awareness, nor the ability to introspect his own behaviour and predict the, the very likely consequences of his own clowning around. Uh, everybody else can see it, apparently except Mark. And as a result of this strange character defect, he often finds himself in unintentionally comedic scrapes, such as do you remember his Dunham Bridge protest from a few weeks ago? This was the time he attempted to pay for the toll for, for crossing a bridge between the Leicestershire and Nottinghamshire border with out of circulation coinage. It was a protest that made absolutely no sense to me or anybody watching it. Uh, I suspect maybe, maybe Mark didn't know what this protest was about because a few days after my video went live, he emailed me explaining that this wasn't in fact a protest, it was some kind of unofficial research project to find out what bridge staff would do when provoked. It was not a protest. It was an unofficial customer relations test to identify if any public interaction training may have been used regarding customer service, which primarily focuses on awkward customers and how they should or should not be treated in a professional capacity. It is part of an independent research program that is part of an ongoing public investigation surrounding working environments and the challenges that society in general has got real life issues with. It helps to identify reactions which can be analysed and then processed for future development training skills in the public sector. The fact that you call me a liar is one thing. Now, you're going to have to use your assumptions again and determine if I am lying or not. Now, whether you believe this was a protest or not, the next time we caught up with Mark was equally bizarre. It was his NCP Crown Argus debacle, where he drove his car into a private car park that did not accept cash, and then upon wishing to leave, demanded that he be allowed to pay cash, a, a demand that was rejected for good reason. He ended up having to hand over his personal contact details and a promise to pay later. It was a pathetic excuse for a protest, if indeed it was a protest, or whatever the hell he, Batman thinks it was, we will never know. But you can see a pattern here, can't you? These bizarre provocations that Mark stages seem to mean something quite profound to him, but absolutely nothing to everybody who is watching his videos. It's as if everybody else is in on the joke except for him. And this is a pattern that you will see continue, because today's excerpt from the life of Bannerman shows him acting as a sort of investigative journalist, but the underlying crime that he apparently is investigating, well, I think we can all see what's going wrong here. So it's an absolute mystery why both uh, the chap that Mark is interviewing, we'll call him Mick from Coventry, and Mark himself just can't seem to twig what's going wrong here. Just very briefly then, have you had much response from the mortgage companies? I've had no answers from them. All they do is they, they send me a letter every month saying, oh, you owe more now, blah, blah, blah. We're here to help you. Just pick up the phone and talk to us. But then when I ask the questions, they just close. The, they're not going to answer the questions because the minute they answer one question, they're admitting to fraud. Mick from Coventry is apparently just asking questions. Questions which, if answered, would reveal the greatest fraud known to all mankind. A, a kind of world-ending fraud which, if exposed, would upend the financial system as we know it. And as a result of that uh, fraud, or at least alleged fraud, that Mick from Coventry believes he's detected, he is protesting the system. He's not just asking questions. He's also failing to do quite an important thing that you have to do when you take out any kind of bank loan. Two years I've not paid my mortgage, but I've never refused to pay it. All I did was, all I did was say, I asked them so many questions. If you answer them, I shall pay, keep paying you. They've never answered them. I imagine it's an unwritten principle of the sovereign citizen movement that inquisitive men should not have to pay for things. Things 
like the monthly repayment on a mortgage. Because as Mick has explained, he doesn't feel that he should have to pay any of his mortgage bills until the mortgage company has answered all of his questions, no matter how ridiculous they might be. Despite the fact that he presumably signed a mortgage agreement that uh, in return for a, a massive lump sum loan it, it, that was able to facilitate the purchase of his house, he would make a monthly repayment until that lump sum was fully paid off or until the day he died. That is actually the origin of the term mortgage. It means loan until death. The idea being that uh, it could be a loan that you're paying off for the rest of your life. Mick does not seem to have got that message and he believes that he does not have to pay for a damn thing until that mortgage company answers every single question that pops into his little mind. They, they said to me, oh, when I wrote to him asking them a question, said, well, we've sent it to the complaints department. And I says, hang on a minute, that's a delay tactic because I've never made a complaint. I've asked questions, not made a complaint. So why has it gone there? It does seem a bit rich that Mick from Coventry is accusing the mortgage company of delay tactics when it is he who has failed to fulfil his obligation for two entire years. And that is a very long time to be missing his mortgage payments. Most companies would have begun and completed eviction proceedings well within that time period. So he has had a, an extensive holiday from his mortgage obligations, a, a fact that seems to be entirely lost on Mick and also on Mark Bannerman because he chose to include this rather telling admission in the interview. I, I think that says a great deal about Mark and his target audience, the sort of people for whom the notion that a man might be able to dodge repayment on a loan that he signed for just by asking questions. Uh, when you say write to him, who have you been writing to? To the uh, mortgage company, asking them, they're, they're claiming they've lent me so much money and I've turned around and said to them, well, if that's the case, show, open your ledger and show me when you lent it me because I know you haven't lent it me. All you've done is use my signature for the trust and they, they're denying it all. This is classic sovereign citizen deflection. Mick from Coventry has been put in a quite desperate situation. He's not paid his mortgage for over two years and the bank or building society will come to take his house. But he'd like to make this their fault. He's saying that unless they do something which is completely unreasonable, unless they hand over their entire internal ledger to, to him, a customer who has been in default for over two years, then he must be in the right. It's a strange request and it's a bizarre kind of escalation that makes sense only to people like Mark Bannerman and Mick from Coventry, a pair of completely imbecilic sovereign citizens who have no understanding of the way the financial system works. And as a consequence, they're going to get themselves into far worse trouble because Mick is determined to go on the offensive and Mark Bannerman, who is interviewing Mick, is going to encourage him to escalate. I put, uh, I put him on a notice, put the judge on notice and everything. They totally ignored it, totally, and just uh, got on with it. If you're the sort of person who likes YouTube videos with a strong narrative thrust, perhaps a clearly defined protagonist with a useful set of skills who sets foot into the world and achieves a set of important goals. And as a result, we might learn some lessons or the world might change. We might have all benefited from the actions taken by uh, the, the main person in the video. Well, if that's your taste in YouTube, then you may have arrived at the wrong channel. You're just not going to see that here. This is a warning for you now. If you would like to see a happy ending or perhaps even an interesting conclusion, my stern advice to you would be to skip this video now because you are not going to get that from here. What we're going to see is a pathetic, ill-informed man conduct a series of predictable failures. And we're going to see him egged on by a man who is too imbecilic himself to know any better. And that failure begins as Mick from Coventry approaches the courts to deliver the first of his catalogue of angry protestations.
I'm going to now go, in, go into the court and tell them that everything they're doing is illegal, try and serve them with uh, some paperwork and put in my N244 form. Mick from Coventry is going to Coventry Crown Court to inform them that literally everything they do is illegal. The entire basis of their existence is undermined by their own alleged lawlessness, according to Mick from Coventry, a man with no legal training or qualification. Now, mindful of the warning I just gave you, the warning that everything in this video is going to be utterly inconsequential, everybody's opinions are without merit, and we are watching very stupid people fail to do literally everything in life. How well do you think this is going to go? Right, you're back out. What happened? Uh, absolutely nothing. I saw security, because I know actually one of the lads on security said to him, can I get this put through to reception? He says, you know they ain't going to accept it. I says, I know that, but I've had to come down because that's part of the procedure. He says, they won't accept it, so you're better off just leaving it because it ain't going to happen. Isn't this exactly like that Franz Kafka novel in which the man from the country seeks to gain entrance to the halls of justice? but is forever prohibited by the outermost gatekeeper who specifically bars his way. It's almost as if the entire legal system in Coventry is conspiring against one man, Mick from Coventry. But unlike the sorry protagonist in the Kafka novel, who finds himself getting old and eventually dying without ever having achieved the chance of justice, Mick from Coventry has a plan B because he is going to report the mortgage company and presumably also the judge or magistrate for uh, the crime of fraud. He's going to go to Coventry Central Police Station and he is going to execute this plan B. It can't possibly fail, can it? Well, of course it will. Please, just, this is not the time for suspense. If you think anything is going to happen in this episode of Mind of Steel, then you have failed to heed the previous two warnings. The next thing Mick will do will fail just as pathetically as the previous thing he has done. So that warning now in your mind, hopefully lodged in your cranium, you now have an active choice to make. You can continue watching this show knowing that your time will be wasted, or you can Flip to anything. If you, if you press the next button, YouTube might give you something more interesting. It could be five minute crafts or, or, or something, um, maybe a video about Warhammer 40K. These are all important subjects on YouTube, I'm led to believe. Anything could be better than what you're about to see. Why are the mortgage company repossessing your home? Because, because... You need to speak to the mortgage company. I've already done all that. And what have they said? But, but they're just getting on with it. They, they just do what they want to do. They do what they want to do. I did warn you, if your idea of fun is watching a man debase himself over and over again, doing absolutely everything other than the thing that he obviously should do, whilst being egged on by an equally ignorant, slightly voyeuristic semi-journalist whose only real goal is to get uh, attention and hits for his YouTube channel, which in turn is being reused, reappropriated by yet another YouTuber who is using that video for exactly the same purpose, but from the diametrically opposite point of view. Well, if that is what you're into, uh, you're a pretty weird person. But yeah, carry on. Anybody else, you should have left by now. I, I, I literally can't believe that you're still here watching this twaddle, this absolutely pathetic attempt uh, uh, to circumvent the obvious conclusion to this story. We all know where this is going to end. By the time this video goes live, Mick from Coventry will probably be living in a, in a shack or a tent in a field, just like that other Mick we saw a few years ago. Do you remember Mick from Gateshead? Well, he's not living a particularly nice life either. This is what happens to sovereign citizens. It always ends this way. I mean, it's a, it's a, they it's, have. It's a civil matter, it's not a criminal police matter. No, it isn't a criminal matter, it is a civil matter, but yeah. it's fraud, so that is a criminal matter. Fraud is criminal, that's why I'm down here, to report a fraud. So if you could give me a crime number, please, and look into it, that's all I'm asking. 
This is like a Jedi mind trick that's gone horribly wrong. You know that scene in Star Wars A New Hope where Obi-Wan Kenobi tells the muddle-headed stormtrooper that these aren't the droids you're looking for, and in that bizarre moment he allows the, the protagonists to pass on their way to Moss Eisley spaceport uh, where they meet Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon uh, and they blast off to fabulous adventures in the cosmos. Well, that's not what's happening here, unfortunately. This is the exact opposite, because Mick's attempt to convince the police officer that they should be intervening in a case of obviously civil fraud by his somewhat strange argument that civil fraud is in fact criminal fraud because fraud can be criminal. Maybe I've tried to um, sanewash this argument because that, that's, I think, what he's trying to say. Well, it's just not carrying any water, presumably because unlike the muddle-headed stormtrooper, this police officer is alert and doing her job, and she perhaps also paid attention on day one of police officer school, where they teach officers that uh, police are there to enforce criminal and not civil procedure. Unfortunately, this is not something that either Mick or Mark Bannerman, the cameraman, seem to have been aware of. It's news to them. Yeah, but what I'm saying, the police won't get involved in this. It's the mortgage company repossessing your home. Yes, fraudulently. Fraudulently. They're doing it fraudulently. Why are they doing it fraudulently? Because I've just explained to you, if you read all that there, yeah, that explains everything. The mortgage company, they must repossess houses. All the, all the time. Yeah, they do. Mick and Mark are not just wrong, they're condescendingly wrong. It's just that they can't handle being told that they have misunderstood this situation, and as a result, Mark is getting Mick into even greater trouble. If he has the ability to pay off his mortgage, there would be a very simple way of saving his house from repossession, and that would be to immediately start repayments, send a letter of apology to the mortgage company, and perhaps a little explanation that he was briefly afflicted by a form of madness which caused him to become associated with the sovereign citizen movement. But that's not going to happen. Mick is not going to be seeing the error of his ways, and Mark certainly isn't going to be pointing him back to a path of sanity that would allow him to retain that the home and the comfort that he's used to. This is all going to go wrong, and he is going to do the wrong thing. If you are hoping for a happy ending, please don't even think about it. It's not going to happen. This is Mind of Steel. I catalogue some of the United Kingdom's most ludicrous conspiracy theorists, and nothing good ever happens to them. So you should have the utmost contempt for both of these people, because they have brought it upon themselves. It's a very simple question. Should the civilian on the desk record the crime allegation, or should there be judge and executioner? This is actually a very interesting idea. What if, and I'm just dreaming here, what if the police officers and civilian staff of police stations who man the reception were allowed to be judge and executioner? What if there was a big red button which, when pressed, would release a trap door which would cause uh, sovereign citizen flat earther types like Mick from Coventry to fall down into maybe a, a spike trap or a furnace or a, a bottomless viper pit? And in doing so, that would act as a deterrent for all the other sovereign citizen types to come into the, the police station and waste time by making entirely spurious reports like the one that you're going to hear for the next 20 seconds. It's illegal because they never lent me any money in the first place. They don't lend anybody money. What they do is they use your signature and they take money out of an account and claim that they've lent it you. Yeah, no, they've, they've never lent me a penny. Listen, they've never lent me a penny. You don't know the situation, and I do. Thank it's fraud. In an ideal universe, the universe with that um, trapdoor apparatus I described previously, nobody should have heard those words. Because Mick wasn't just wrong, he was aggressively and condescendingly wrong. Everybody could hear that. The, the, the lady working behind the, the kiosk, 
could hear that, and we could hear that. In fact, the only people who didn't seem to understand just how wrong, condescending, and aggressive Mick was being was, of course, Mick himself, and the man holding the camera, Mark Bannerman, who we have already established is a man not gifted with uh, sufficient quantities of self-awareness to realize just how bad he's presenting his, his friend. This is not a sympathetic look at, at a man who has been wronged by society. This is a man who has done everything wrong and then has chosen to be aggressive about it. So what would you like to say to the police as a reference point at this well, time? Well, at the end of the day, they're not doing their job. They're, they're uh, acting fraudulently along with them because they've got do Dunn's numbers themselves, haven't they? They're all corporations. They don't work for the people. They're a corporation. And that's just proved it. Mick and Mark believe they have uncovered a portfolio of evidence that the police, the courts, and now the mortgage companies are engaged hand in twisted hand in a sort of despicable conspiracy to deprive the sorts of people like um, Mick, who write their names in capital letters and believe themselves to be sovereign citizen, freemen of the land, of their liberty and property. Uh, evidence, for example, like this. Mick did a subject access request and among the paperwork they sent to him was a second copy of the same order. But this time, no court seal is present. Surely. Any copy would have been certified a true copy if the same seal was used. Now, in case this doesn't make any sense, and believe me, this does not make any sense. What Bannerman is saying is that the copy of the court order, which was obtained by a Freedom of Information subject access request, did not have the, uh, the court administration stamp on it, which the original identical copy of the court order did have. And... Rather than concluding that this was just simply an artifact of how freedom of information requests work, Bannerman concluded that this was in fact evidence that both documents were in fact fraudulent. I've also showed that the court have sent me a, a warrant sort of thing with no stamp, no uh, signature, judge's signature. So that's fraud straight away. They don't want to know. As with all of the, the previous Bannerman scenarios we've encountered, the only person in the room who doesn't seem to realize the gravity of the situation is Bannerman himself. Because all this time he's been egging his friend on, he's been encouraging Mick from Coventry to do these stupid things, when the obvious way of preserving his home would be simply to start paying the premiums again. In that scenario, the bank would most likely allow him to keep his house. But that's not what's going to happen, because the, the sovereign citizens interpret every defeat as confirmation that their wacky beliefs are in fact vindicated. Right, I'm going to post these uh, first class recorded delivery so that they get there tomorrow. And also there's a void order in there as well, which had already sent them previously, which they've basically ignored. So I've sent it to them again. That's supposed to put a bit of a break on it, but we'll see. By now, Anybody watching this will have concluded that this last-ditch attempt to save Mick's home will fail, just like all of his other attempts have failed, and that is because they are based on the entirely erroneous belief system of the sovereign citizen movement, a, a belief system which is rooted in nonsensical conspiracy theories. And everybody can see this except for Mark Bannerman, the man holding the camera, who seems to be encouraging Mick to conduct all manner of self-inflicted stupidities. And that is because Mark is a man who possesses very little self-awareness. He cannot see what's happening. He can't see what everybody else can see, which is that he's encouraging Mick from Coventry to do all of the wrong things. In fact, at this point, there's only one right thing to do, which would be Mick should start paying his mortgage. He should start paying the debt that he owes, and perhaps, if he's lucky, the mortgage company might stop the, uh, the eviction process. Maybe. He's probably left it a bit too late, in which case, by the time you watch this video, Mick will be living in a tent, 
and Bannerman will be back to his old antics of making ridiculous confrontational videos that make absolutely no sense. Right, that's that process job done. done, mate. Yeah, job done. So now we just got to wait and see if they accept it. The N uh, two two four, uh, the N two four four form. Uh, hopefully that'll put a bit of a block on it. But I've also put a void order in with all the details of all the legislation they're breaking and all the rules they're breaking. Why it should be voided? Despite the fact that absolutely everything Mick has done to this day has failed. Mick now believes that he has the right to send an order to the court that the entire civil procedure be voided. That's what I think he means by a void order, which of course is going to fail, as everything he has done to this point has failed. And when that failure is complete, when Mick eventually finds himself destitute, entirely homeless, and without the means to pay for any kind of accommodation, he will blame the system. He will never look at his own behaviour and say, yeah, maybe that was my fault for following complete idiots like Mark Bannerman uh, down the, uh, the sovereign citizen path for, for barking up the wrong tree, a tree of eventual and certain homelessness. Sovereign citizens never blame themselves for their own misfortune. It's always somebody else's fault. It's always the system that is against them. It's the collusion of the police, the mortgage company, and strangely, the courts. It's a vast and inexplicable conspiracy that they happen to be the centre of. Why is everybody ganging up against Mick? Could it be that he doesn't pay his bills? No, no. It's because the system is inherently evil. But they, I sent that to them a good two or three weeks ago, and they haven't replied yet, so I don't hold much... Uh faith in it happening because like well you've just seen what happened down the police station and the same happened in the court they're all in it together it's all a big collusion they ain't going to do anything at the beginning of this video i introduced mark bannerman as a man who is so lacking in self-awareness that his inability to predict the obvious consequences of his own behavior often lands him in these comedically ironic scenarios such as today where he's intended to present his friend as a sort of victim of a, a vast and complex fraud, a collusion between police, courts, and the mortgage company. But we can all see what's actually happening here, because if anyone committed a fraud, it's Mick. If anyone deserves to be investigated and prosecuted by the police, it is also Mick. Bannerman doesn't seem to see this. He wants us all to feel sorry for a man who just decided one day that he was going to act in an entirely dishonest way that is incompatible with the contract that he signed. And his reasons for doing so, as we've heard, are entirely bogus. They're based on the crazy beliefs of the sovereign citizen movement, which is why I strongly recommend that if there is a, a sovereign citizen in your life, you should perhaps do what the Coventry police are not allowed to do. Install some kind of trap door in your home, and beneath it install maybe a, a spike trap, and then when the sovereign citizen steps onto that trap door, you can be ready to push the button, maybe on a remote control device, so you could do it from anywhere, and conveniently erase that sovereign citizen from your life. You'll be doing the world a favour, and then when the police come round to investigate that person's disappearance, perhaps they can be reminded of what happened in that police station in Coventry. And maybe you won't be prosecuted for murder because you will have rid the world of one more sovereign citizen nuisance. Uh, that's not legal advice, by the way. That would be a very bad thing to do. But you know it because you're not a sovereign citizen. Anyway, until then, well, I'm entirely worn out thinking about these people. Some news. If you have um, any updates about the people in this story or any other stories that I've mentioned, please email me at uh, reynardwilson at protonmail.com or join the Telegram group. The addresses are on my YouTube homepage. And uh, if you remember, uh, MC Toon is soliciting donations for his trip to Antarctica. I heartily recommend that you uh, donate some money to that because it's a very good cause. It will go to combating the menace of sovereign citizen flat earthers, people like Mark Bannerman. 
If you want less of them, we want more MC Toon. So please be generous, donate to his cause. And I will see you in one week's time for another hearty helping of ridiculous sovereign citizen, flat earther, anti-5G, oh, I don't even know what it's going to be. It's going to be something very stupid. I'm sure you are going to regret watching the next episode of Mind of Steel.